live NFL trivia every Wednesday night on Twitch at 9 p.m. Eastern. Come show off your football knowledge for a chance to win cash prizes. Check the link in the description to find out more. And now, on with our feature presentation. First round picks are incredibly valuable. They are some of the most valuable assets that a team can have. When you draft someone in the first round, the expectation is that they will become a very good player, and depending on their position, could even become the face of the franchise. The expectations are sky high for first round picks, and at minimum, you expect them to play out their rookie contract and be with the team for at least four or five years. That is the bare minimum to expect them to be there until their contract runs out. So anytime a team cuts or gets rid of a first round pick before the rookie contract is up, it raises eyebrows. Most of the time, it means that the team whiffed on the pick, or something came up that forced the team to take some kind of action. Anytime a team cuts a first round pick not even before the end of his second season with the team, something really went haywire. And if a team has multiple first round picks and neither of those players are there by the end of the second season, ooh man, that is ugly. What's the point I'm trying to get across here? The Las Vegas Raiders draft class in 2020 was historically bad. I'm going to dive into the historical context of this in a bit, because I can say without a shred of recency bias that when you look at the numbers and the statistics, what the Raiders did in the first round in 2020 was truly historically bad. But before I do that, we first need to understand the two players that the Raiders chose in the first round and understand why they got cut to begin with. Let's start with the first of their two picks from that round, when with the 12th pick, they chose Alabama wide receiver Henry Ruggs. The pick was a bit of a surprise to some, especially since it seemed like Jerry Judy or C.D. Lamb was going to be the first receiver taken off the board. However, Ruggs' speed, which he showcased at Alabama and showcased at the NFL Combine when he ran a 4-2-7-40, made him skyrocket up draft boards. And over his first one and a half seasons, there were flashes of potential that showed why he was a first-round pick. While there were quite a few games where he struggled, as in his first season where he played 13 games, he was held without a catch twice, and was held at 8 yards or less in 3 additional games, there were some games where opposing defenses had no answer whatsoever for his speed. He famously caught the game-winning Hail Mary touchdown against the Jets that kept their season alive, which you can learn more about by clicking the card in the upper right corner. And he was having a solid 2021 campaign. Through the first 7 games, he had 469 yards receiving, meaning that he was well on pace for over 1,000 yards. However, everything changed on November 2nd, 2021. At 3.40 a.m. that Tuesday morning, Ruggs was driving back from Topgolf and was intoxicated. He was going 156 miles per hour and slammed into a Toyota. The Toyota burned, and Tina Tinter, at just 23 years old, and her dog tragically died, being burned in the car. Ruggs' blood alcohol level at the time of the crash was 0.16, well over the legal limit. Combined with the fact that Ruggs was possessing a gun at the time that he was under the influence, and as of this video, Ruggs is facing up to 46 years in prison. If there is justice, he will be locked up for a long period of time. Less than 24 hours after the incident, the Raiders cut Ruggs. And one week later, the Raiders would cut their other first-round pick from that draft. With their second first-round pick in the draft, with this one coming from the Chicago Bears as part of the Khalil Mack trade, the Raiders decided to address the defensive side of the ball and try and fix a pass defense that ranked in the bottom quarter of the league in 2019 in yards allowed, touchdowns allowed, interceptions, and yards per attempt. Vegas decided to fix this issue by taking Damon Arnett, a cornerback from Ohio State. For the most part, every cornerback taken in the first round of the 2020 NFL Draft not named A.J. Terrell has been a disappointment so far. But even before getting cut, Arnett was maybe the biggest one of them all. In his 13 games with the team, he did not record a single interception and only broke up three passes. Opposing quarterbacks had a field day targeting him, as on passes thrown his way, he allowed a passer rating of 129.2. For some perspective, the highest passer rating by any quarterback in a single season was in 2011, when Aaron Rodgers won the MVP by throwing for 45 touchdowns and just 6 interceptions, and posting a passer rating of 122.5. If a quarterback did nothing but target Arnett, they would have had a higher passer rating, 7 points higher to be exact, than the all-time record. Combine that with a few injuries, from a thumb injury to some concussions, and his career got off to a horrible start on the field. And somehow off the field, it got even worse. Arnett had already been involved in a multitude of off-the-field issues, from somehow crashing four rental cars in one month to fleeing the scene after injuring someone in a car wreck. On November 5th, a few days before the Raiders were set to take on the Giants, Arnett was seen on TikTok waving a gun around threatening to kill someone. And after the video came out, combined with this poor play, the Raiders decided three days later on Monday, November 8th, to cut him. The Raiders had two first-round picks in the 2020 NFL Draft with Henry Ruggs and Damon Arnett. Both of them, after just 18 months, are no longer with the team. And as we're about to find out, that is historically bad, 
and unprecedented in just about every way possible. The purpose of this video is pretty simple. I wanted to look at every draft in the history of the NFL from 1967 on, look at every team to have multiple first-round picks, and see what happened and how long they lasted with their respective teams. Is there any other team to not have both of their first-round picks on the roster by the end of their second season? You might be asking why I'm restricting this to just 1967 and beyond, and the reason for that is simple. The 1967 NFL Draft marked the first draft of the Common Era, which is when the AFL and NFL decided to combine their draft into one and not have two separate drafts. If I looked at drafts before then, I'd be looking at teams that fit that criteria, but because they decided to play with the rival league instead, and that wasn't really the purpose of this exercise. I wanted to look at teams that have first round picks that went haywire, not teams that have first round picks that just decided to play for more money or more prestige somewhere else. Plus, prior to the 1960s, there were tons of players who got drafted that never had any intentions of playing professional football. It was a completely different time period. You would guys play one season before hanging it up, you had guys who would play one season and then serve their country overseas, and you would have guys who went on to do other things. Take, for instance, the Cleveland Browns in 1952. They had two first-round picks, but one only played one season with the team, and the other one decided to play baseball for the Boston Red Sox instead. I only wanted to look at teams that have multiple first-round picks during the era where you could all but guarantee that if you drafted a player, he would be the one playing for you. And of the teams that have multiple first-round picks, there has only been one other team to lose two of them before the second season ended. That team was the 1984 Cincinnati Bengals. Cincinnati had three first-round picks that season. With the fourth pick in the draft, they took Arizona linebacker Ricky Hundley. With the 16th pick in the draft, they took Maryland nose tackle Pete Koch. And with the 28th pick in the draft, they took North Carolina offensive tackle Brian Blados. Before the 1985 season ended, neither Hundley nor Koch were on the team. However, when we're comparing the first round of the 2020 Raiders with the 1984 Bengals, there is no real comparison because the Bengals, with their first-round class, blew the Raiders out of the water. First off, the circumstances regarding the 1984 Bengals are completely different than the 2020 Raiders. Ricky Hundley never played a snap for the Bengals because he could not agree on a rookie contract, thanks to some notoriously cheap contract work on the part of Mike Brown. I already did a video partially on the Hundley fiasco, so if you want to learn more about that and how badly the Bengals screwed up there, then click the card in the upper right corner. But at least with Hundley, the Bengals got some compensation out of him as they traded him to the Broncos for three picks, one of which was three-time Pro Bowl defensive back David Fulcher, and one of which was wide receiver Tim McGee, who played eight seasons in Cincy and had nearly 5,000 yards receiving in his time with the team. While they got nothing out of Koch, who was waived after just one season, they at least got value out of Hunley. The Raiders, on the other hand, got nothing for cutting Ruggs and Arnett. Secondly, even if the Bengals got nothing from Hunley, and even if you think that that is an absolutely unfair way to evaluate a move, Remember that the Bengals had three first-round picks that year, with a third being Brian Blados. I'm not going to sit here and pretend that Blados was a really good player, because he was decent at best. However, he lasted eight seasons with the Bengals, made the all-rookie team in 1984, and started 60 games, including every game during the 1985 season. That has to be worth something, right? Even if the Bengals completely whiffed on their first two picks, Blados made up for that just by being a serviceable option on the team for close to a decade. The Raiders just completely struck out with all of their first-round picks. The Bengals had one first-round pick that was a whiff, and that they cut after one year. The other one resulted in a boatload of draft picks that helped lay the foundation for the Bengals being a solid team around the turn of the decade from the 1980s into the 1990s. And the other one resulted in a player who spent eight seasons with the team and was a starter for roughly four seasons worth of games. The Raiders, on the other hand, had both first-round picks cut before the end of year two, getting nothing in return for either of them. And again, the 1984 Bengals and the 2020 Raiders are the only two teams in NFL history in the Common Draft or the Super Bowl era to lose multiple first-round picks before the second season ended. Without any shred of recency bias, the Raiders truly might have had the worst first round in the history of the NFL Draft. On one hand, the 2020 NFL Draft was a weird one. It was tough for teams to conduct the interviews and the workouts the way that they used to because the heart of the draft process was during the COVID-19 pandemic where everything was virtual. For the most part, these teams were winging it and were working on the fly with regards to protocols and how everything was going to be done. It's not super surprising that the whiff rate for first-rounders in 2020 seems to be incredibly high, because COVID screwed up a lot of things, with the draft process absolutely being included in that. On the other hand, the Raiders really whiffed hard on this draft. The team had seven draft picks, all within the first four rounds, and a lot of them have, putting it bluntly, not worked out. Lynn Bowden was chosen in the third round, and was in trade to the Miami Dolphins before even playing a snap. Tanner Muse was chosen in the third round and was cut before ever taking a snap with the team. 
When you have five picks inside the first three rounds, and the only one that is still on the team is Brian Edwards, that is really, really bad. Now, if even one draft pick works out, the Raiders can be saved from having the worst draft class of all time. There are tons of draft classes, like the 2008 Jaguars and the 2006 Dolphins, just to name a few, where the team somehow whiffed on every pick. So even if one player on the Raiders from this draft class, which is thinning by the week, turns out to be solid, then it is not the worst class of all time. But without a doubt, the 2020 Raiders have the worst first round of any team in the history of the NFL. When you draft a first round pick expecting him to be able to make it to the end of his rookie contract at the bare minimum, and he can't even do that, that's a problem. When you have multiple first round picks who do that, that is historically bad, to the point where the Raiders are, in the Super Bowl era spanning over 55 years, the only team to have multiple first round picks and have all of these first round picks off of the roster 18 months later. It would be tough to do much worse than the Raiders in 2020 with their first round picks, because the draft this poorly is literally without a shred of hyperbole, unprecedented, and historically bad. Get your official Jaguar Gear 9 merchandise by going to jg9shop.com, and be sure to like this video, ring the notification bell, subscribe down below if you haven't already, as it helps the channel out a lot, and be sure to check out Twitch every Wednesday night at 9 p.m. Eastern for your chance to play NFL Trivia and win cash prizes. Link in the description below. If you want to see videos like this condensed down to 60 seconds, then follow me on TikTok at JRGator9 and subscribe to 60 Second NFL History on YouTube. To see highlight videos of players throughout the history of the NFL, subscribe to JG9 Highlights. Also, special thanks to all of our Patreon supporters for helping out the channel. Your support is greatly appreciated. See so how you can become a patron and request future video topics in the description below.